Hello, I'm Nick from the Roses Theatre and whilst we wait to welcome you back, we're bringing you two minutes of roses. And today my guest is a very lovely actor of stage and screen. Um, she is the delightful Sue Holderness. Sue, hello, how are you? That's a very nice introduction. Thank you, Nick. Delightful. I like that. I'm fine, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm not, I'm, I will be very pleased when all this is over, but in fact, I spend a lot of my time counting my blessings that I've got a garden and a husband and that it's really not too bad. Famously, obviously, you played Marlene in Only Fools and Horses and The Green Green Grass, which you did over a period of 24 years. That's amazing. Um, if you're cast in a film, you get to play a character for two hours, maybe. But to have somebody you can live with for 24 years, that's brilliant. Did she develop at all over that time? Did she change? Well, we were very, very lucky that John Sullivan decided to write the spin-off series for us because Marlene was a tiny little character in Only Fools and Horses. Um, all we really knew about Marlene was that people would occasionally say, oh, do you remember Marlene? And the reply was always, all the boys remember Marlene. And we know that she'd had a bit of a fling with Dell, and indeed with most of Peckham by the sound of it. But then when we moved into the spin-off series, The Green Green Grass, you got to know her a little bit better. And we had such a wonderful time filming that because it was in the, in the beautiful countryside of Herefordshire with a lot of it happening in John Chalice, who plays Boise, in his beautiful house. And it was a very, very happy time. And, and I'm very blessed because not only Only Fools and Horses, but also The Green Green Grass, they get repeated all the time. So thank you, God. You've worked with some uh, brilliant playwrights over the years. I know you've done a lot of Eightbourne. You worked with Ray Cooney not too long ago. Have you got a favourite playwright whose works you like to, to perform? Well, I think that it has to be Eightbourne because I've done a lot of Eightbourne plays. I must have done more than 20 and some of them more than once. I've done Season's Greetings three times. And I, <laughs> I a bit like John Sullivan, the, you don't have to do anything really. You've just got to believe in the author and what he's written and say it and believe it. And you don't have to do anything else. It's it, Occasionally you see things, don't you, on telly and sometimes in the theatre too, where actors are doing just that bit too much because they know that the material's not really there. You don't mm. have to do that with Acorn. You just play play what he's written. And the result, the, I mean, I'm so pleased I went into comedy. There's nothing nicer, is there? You know this, than hearing the laughter of an audience. It's the most joyful thing. And the, for me, on stage, Acorn's been the one. You've also done your fair share of panto over the years. Um, the Roses has a new family panto, King Arthur, coming this year. Uh, do you have any favourite roles that you've played in panto that spring to mind? All the baddies. All the I baddies. Once. I played a goodie in Jack and the Beanstalk at the, in Richmond once when I was dressed up as a sort of pink Barbie doll and had to be <laughs> terribly sweet and nice to everybody. And I found it much less satisfying than being evil. So my favourite pantomimes are Sleeping Beauty, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and Beauty and the Beast because they've all got one really bad leading lady. How important would you say it is to support your local theatre at the current time? Oh, I, I pray that people will, will carry on. And we've heard wonderful stories about people who've bought tickets for shows and the shows aren't going to happen and they say, no, keep our money because they want to keep the theatre. And, and I think, you know, there are appeals for all the theatres. I live in Windsor and the Theatre Royal Windsor is another beautiful theatre. And how the heck it's going to carry on with no income over the Christmas period, which is usually the big earning time. How do we know? So we've got everything. We're praying that it will all come good again. And in time for pantomime. This is for the Roses Theatre. Can I ask you, when you last received roses? When were you last sent oh, roses? So very recently. My birthday was on May the 28th and I received a large number of roses, I'm happy to tell you, and tulips. And I got a lot of flowers. Last but not least, uh, The Roses has a, a thriving youth theatre. Uh, you trained at the Central School of Speech and Drama. Do you have any advice for any young people who might be daft or brave enough to be entering the industry at this strange time? I'm often asked for advice and it's very difficult to know, isn't it? Because I've been so lucky. I left drama school in 1970. So it's exactly 50 years ago that I left Central. And I've, I'm touching wood as I say this, I've never had more than three months without knowing what the next job is going to be. So wow. I've, I've, that's, that's lucky. I mean, I've taken some jobs that weren't the best jobs in the world, but they've all been learning experiences. 
and I've absolutely loved every second and wouldn't have changed it. But I've also seen the misery and the unhappiness that it can cause. I mean, I recently went up for two televisions. I don't usually go up for televisions, and I didn't get either of the jobs, and I wanted to cut my throat, I was so miserable. You know, you've got to be very strong to be rejected and come back, bounce back. But if it's the only thing you want to do and you want to do it more than life itself, then all I can say is jolly good luck. There we go. Fantastic advice. This has been Two Minutes of Roses. We'll see you next time. And Sue Holderness, thank you. Thank you very much. It's lovely to see you again. Thank you for inviting me, Nick. Good luck. <laughs>